Hello again, YouTube. Welcome back once again to the Broken Past. Um, I apologize for my voice ahead of time. Uh, I've got a bit of a cold. Um, I've actually been kind of holding out a few days to do this video, but the impatience is getting the best of me, and I would love to get it done. So I'm going to just power through it. Um, apologies in the meantime for the scratchy voice, but hopefully it doesn't impact the video too much. Um, so today we're going to do something a bit different again. Um, today we're going to take this pretty beat up uh, DS Lite. Um, the hinge is broken, and the as it comes up, we can see here the top display has a whole bunch of blocks of uh, dead pixels, um, and it's pretty scratched up. But we're going to go ahead and take this guy, and we are going to do a couple things. First off, we're going to take that top screen out of there and replace it with a brand new top screen. Um, you can kind of see here a little bit through the packaging. There's no double-sided sticky tape. And you'll see once we get to that point, it's going to be a little bit of an issue. Um, I think we'll be able to get around it and just transfer some of the old screen sticky tape onto this one. So we're going to replace this guy. And even more fun than that, we have an aftermarket. So completely aftermarket. Obviously, this is not going to be as good as the original. Um, Zelda edition DS Lite shell. So the thing with aftermarket cases or shells is that they look nice, but there's usually some fit and finish that's not quite uh, perfect on these guys. So we'll see if we run into any issues. Usually the biggest issue that I've seen comes into play around the trigger buttons. They usually don't seem like they fit quite so well uh, in the new shell. I've had to actually use the old triggers a few times. Um, hopefully we don't need to, because I think these pink ones will look <laughs> kind of strange in this one, but we'll give it a shot. <clears throat> we'll see where that gets us. Um, so yeah, we've kind of gone through this initial disassembly part uh, multiple times already, but in case this is your first video that you're seeing, uh, we'll just go through it all. Just kind of kind of give you the walkthrough. I've had a lot of people asking about how to do a shell swap. Um, They've been a little bit intimidated about doing it. There are a lot of steps to do, and there's there's some risk of mistake, but really overall, it's not too bad. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to demonstrate that in this video today. So, first things first, we need to remove the battery cover and pull the battery out of here. And this is usually fairly, <laughs> what I've been able to tell, a lot of these that I've bought cheap online, it's usually fairly gummed up in here. I don't know what, I don't know what people do to these poor consoles, um, but they're usually pretty pretty beat up. So we'll take that. I usually just cheat and use a spudger to get the battery out. And it looks like this has a lot. This lost one of the bumper covers, but there's still uh, one more on there. So. I don't care too much about preserving this, since this shell is pretty disgusting and pretty beat up, and so we'll probably end up trashing it. But if you ultimately need to save this, if you need to disassemble it for something else, just take a, a small knife or a, a set of tweezers or something and, and pry that out of there, and it'll go back in uh, when you need to. From this point, we have a couple screws we need to remove. Uh, we've got a Phillips screw here, here, and here. Uh, there's another one here. We'll get to this in a moment. And then we have tri-wing screws, Nintendo's sort of proprietary um, screw head. There's one of those right here under the DSi, or the, the DS cartridge slot. We need to make sure we don't forget this. Then there's three more of those, one here, one down here, and one over here to, uh, to get out. So pretty easy to disassemble this part of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'll probably reuse most, if not all, of these screws. So I'm going to kind of keep them off here, off to the side, kind of in order. Um, I've done this enough times, I usually don't lose. Oh, there's actually, there's actually a small piece of something here. Looks like maybe that's part of, <laughs> maybe they put tape over it? Um, or that's part of the, what was left of that sticky pad? <laughs> I don't know what that was. Just pull that out of there, because we don't need it. Thank you. 
But anyway, um, a lot of these cases do come with re replacement screws. Um, I usually don't use them. I might use the hinge pieces, which we'll get to, or not the hinge pieces, but the the bumper pieces we'll get to here in a bit. Um, but we'll see if we need to or not. Oh, dang it. Some of that sticker is left in there. <laughs> okay. Usually this isn't part of the assembly process. You know what, we'll just, just pull it out that way. I'm kind of good. Okay, anyway, I got those two up there at the top. And over here on the side. And then I've got just a real cheap uh, tri wing screwdriver. You can usually, I actually got a couple of these that came with the replacement shell. So you might not even need to buy one of these if you're doing a shell swap. Uh, they might just come right along with it. If not, you can buy them pretty cheap uh, online. You know, maybe two or three bucks for for a set that usually includes a security or a, a tri wing screwdriver and maybe a Phillips as well. And just get all these little guys out of here. At this point. I usually like to take my spudger tool and I'll start over here. I'll slightly reopen the case here, kind of push back on this cartridge slot and then I can get a spudger into here and start working my way around. There's going to be two, there's two little plastic tabs in this top piece or this bottom piece that connects to the top. Um, be careful of those if, we're, if you don't want to break it. You can kind of see in the video, there's two spots right there. Um, just be careful of those and just work your rest of the way across here. And once it's loosened up, flip it back over. And usually kind of keep pressure on the shoulder buttons just to make sure they don't fly out. And I'll show you why in a second here. And the whole thing just kind of comes out. So the shoulder buttons, um, it's really kind of hard to tell in the video. But there is a sort of a peg here and there's a tiny little spring in there and that actually connects to this bottom piece as well as to the other piece to hold the shoulder button in place and then the springs kind of actuates and kicks the button uh, back out but those springs are under a lot of tension so we just want to make sure that they don't go flying when we get it, when we remove the the case um i usually when i pull them out i just put my finger around there so when the spring disengages it just kind of hits onto my finger um, usually I've noticed a lot of these cases come with replacement springs. So if you do lose it, it's probably not a huge deal. Uh, but just kind of something to keep in mind. All right. At this point we have two more screws. This one that we saw originally underneath the battery cover and then an extra one over here. And these are going to hold the motherboard into the bottom of the case. And these two match so as long as as long as we know which one of these or as long as we find the two screws that correspond to these holes it doesn't matter which of the holes they go into and we're going to disengage the antenna cable and this is the uh, Wi-Fi card as well as I believe this is also the BIOS uh, if this isn't in here the console will not boot um, there's a double-sided sticky pad here on this side and the connectors on this side. So I usually start, remove this side and then it's going to sound bad, but just kind of pry it a little bit off of this side and that pad will just come right off. So I'll set that over here and we have a second connector here, which is the microphone connector. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off as well. And the key here is to kind of make sure that we pay attention to the way that these wires are routed. Uh, first thing I'm going to do before I, guess, before I lift that part of it up is I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and pull the wireless antenna. Right now this is run underneath of the DS cartridge slot. Um, 
and it's fairly easy to remove um, and fairly difficult to put back in because it likes to get caught underneath of there. So hopefully we won't run into that snag uh, today, but just kind of usually sit, get the connector to face upward. And it seems to not connect, not stick nearly as much when trying to pull it out. And there we have it. And so the, the trick is, yeah, making sure where, which direction the microphone cable runs. And there's kind of a set uh, orientation that this is run in. And there's, there's great pictures online. I probably will not be able to provide nearly as good of a description here, um, especially because I need to pull this cover off. So let's do that real quick. So reach under here and kind of give the screen a little bit of a push and start disengaging the board from the case. So now with that disengaged, we can really kind of see underneath of it, this microphone cable that sort of runs down between the the peg and the, the piece for the right bumper, underneath this other screw hole, and then it's got a special track that runs all along the side for it. And ultimately it's gonna come back underneath of here, or underneath of here, I think it actually just comes right up there. It's gonna come right through here and then reattach to this guy. So this is also a little bit, a little dirty. I did test this and I made sure that both the GBA slot and the DS slot did read cartridges. So we are good on that. Um, but at this point, do a couple things. So kind of pull some of the wires out of the way for the moment. And if we flip it out like this, we can see that the top screen for the DS light connects to, uh, has this ribbon cable that comes right down into here. And this counts for both the speaker, the display, as well as it runs signal for the left and the right speaker. So there are no special cables for the speakers. They just all run with the single ribbon cable. So at this point, we simply lift up a little flap here Usually use your fingers and lift it up. And then I will take some tweezers and basically attempt to pull it straight out of the board. And just like that, we have half of the DS removed. So I'm gonna take this board and I'm actually gonna sit it off to the side for the moment. We'll go back to this here in a little bit. Just sit it off camera. <clears throat> And now we get to some of the other good stuff. So in our case, we're gonna use a brand new shell. So we're not gonna need any of the buttons. However, most cases don't come with replacement pads. So we're gonna take these pads off and store them off to the side. So we have the D-pad, we have our, our action buttons, and then we have the start select pad. So we'll pull all these off. And we're not going to reuse these. I usually keep these for follow-on builds, but I'm just going to pull them out anyway. So that way they are not in the way when doing the rest of the disassembly. So just take all these guys out. You could just flip it over and dump it upside down. Uh, I'm doing it around the camera, so I'm trying not to do that because I don't want to lose them everywhere. And lastly, we have two screws that are right here. And this piece right in here, which we can kind of see in the video, this is actually the hinge. This is the main piece that's going to control how far open or closed it goes. And of course, this is what gets broken on most of these older consoles. But that hinge screws in to the underside right here. These are easy screws to, to know which one these are because these are significantly longer um, than all the rest of the screws in the console. So we'll pull these two out. And when we do that, we flip it back over. We'll pull that the hinge cover off. It comes off. And then here's our hinge. And we can probably actually take that now. Take our pliers, especially because this one's broken. Pull it off. Save this. Do not lose the hinge. Um, cases aren't going to come with replacement hinges. So I'll pull that off. 
put back over and loosen up our microphone cable and get it out of the way. So now we've got a couple things to look at. Um, in our case, we're going to replace the top screen, so I don't care too much if I ruin the ribbon cable attached to it, but if you are just doing a case swap and you've got a good top screen, this is a, uh, probably the hardest part of the case swap, and that is feeding this ribbon cable through and then back through the new case. So if we can see it pretty close in the video, there's a tiny slit that runs um, that runs from right at the ribbon cable uh, slot or the hinge over you know, about an inch or so into here. And this is what's going to help to at least get the ribbon cable in and out of this bottom piece. And then we'll discuss actually getting it in and out of the top case. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of, since we removed the hinge, we can now kind of pull this this bottom piece or top piece over we're looking at it to the left and disengage it from the rest of it but we need to be careful with this ribbon cable that we properly feed it um, through this slit so if I start that process and it kind of helps I've discovered to it's kind of doing it for us automatically now is to kind of angle that cable just a little bit as that whole piece comes out then the cable will just kind of slide right through there. So we got that out. Um, we have another piece here we need to save, which is this metal ring. And that kind of helps to guide uh, all the pieces into place. Um, of course, be careful around this with the delicate ribbon cable, but I'm just gonna pull it out just a little bit to get it out of the way. <clears throat> so now we're almost done with the disassembly. We now have the speakers, the ribbon cable, or the, this display, this ribbon cable, and then there's an antenna that sits right up in here. And to get to that, we need to remove these four screw cover. Um, they're pretty much just stickers. And again, I don't really care about damaging these. Um, if you want to save them, you can use like an X-Acto knife to get under there and keep from possibly scratching this up. Um, I bought this console online for maybe seven to ten bucks, so I'm not really caring if I keep the the case and these stickers in good condition. So I'm going to be a bit extra aggressive with it. All right. And now we have our last four screws of the process. So at this point, we just remove these and we'll also reuse these screws as well. So save these, keep these off to the side. And these, I have a feeling this console must have sat in the sun or something because these, uh, Two of these that I just pulled off also have the same issue with leaving part of the adhesive sticker right inside of here. So let's see if we can get that out of there. Do that for both of these. See, this one didn't want to come out. Let's see if I can just push through it and break it. There we go. I'll pull it off of there. Don't need that. Okay. So from here, we now that we've got those four screws removed, there's a couple of connectors up here that kind of hold it all into place. So to get this apart so we can actually get to the pieces inside of it, we're going to take the front um, or the inside where the screen is at and slide it down and slide the back of the shell up and it'll slightly disengage. 
usually if these have been sticky and gotten gummed up, they might be a little hard to disengage. And if that's the case, I'll usually just take... Oh, there it goes. Either way, I usually still take the spudger, just kind of get it in there to help. Once you've slid it down and out, then just usually use the spudger, and the whole thing will kind of rotate out of the way, just like so. And the whole back will come off. And now, awfully close to being done with disassembly. So, I'm going to hold this up to the camera so you can get a really good view. Because this is sort of a critical piece that we need to get it a little farther away, that we need to make sure we pay attention to for reassembly. So right now we've got the display, and it's still attached with that double-sided sticky tape to the inside of the case. We have the antenna here, and it's going to run down underneath of everything, and then out the side. And we have the right and left speakers. Of course, they're flipped since I have it upside down. Those will actually run right along the top. There's a tiny little track inside of the screen. Um, so we'll, when we install it, we'll reinstall the screen first, attach the speakers, run them along this track and out here, then we'll put this tape down. But there's also a microphone here, and that runs underneath of everything. So it's actually the microphone first, then the screen, then you could probably put the antenna in before or after that, um, and then the speakers come on last. So to get the rest of it disassembled, I'm going to take some pliers and just get rid of this, the tape here. I'm going to save it. Um, usually I reuse the screen, so I'll just stick it on the back. Uh, in this case, we're, we're going to get a new screen, but I'll just keep, I'll still use it back here just for now so I don't. Uh, don't lose it. And then, let's see here. So we'll go ahead to disassemble it. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of slightly pry around the edges and loosen up this double-sided sticky tape here. Being careful not to put too much pressure on the screen itself. Again, if we're going to reuse the screen. It'll sound like it's falling apart, but that's just that sticky tape. And then especially here at the bottom, there's a big, big amount of the double-sided sticky tape. So I usually kind of start on a corner and sort of just pry it. And the whole thing starts to come loose. So now, the trickiest part, at least for me, I think most people that do this, is getting this ribbon cable through this hinge. This hinge is ridiculously tiny and really hard to get it through. Um, I'm going to cheat on this disassembly process because this piece is obviously broken. That hinge is already broken there. Um, I do have some side cutters. Um, be, obviously, be very careful with this if you're reusing the screen. Um, in my case, I'm not reusing the screen, but I'm still going to be careful. You don't want to accidentally cut the ribbon cable if um, if you're going to reuse it. I'm going to try to save the screen. I might ultimately use it someday down the road, but um, since I have this hinge still kind of in there, I've got a little bit of room. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a little bit of persuasion here. See if we can just kind of just break it apart, make our jobs a little bit easier for the disassembly portion of it. Um, I'll cut a little more, Didn't give myself quite enough room. Mm. <laughs> okay, remove that, and then we can just kind of cheat. Sort of slide the whole thing right out of there. 
And then we're going to take, so here's a bit of a closer view of the way the antennas run. Uh, there's a couple tiny little pegs here. The antenna just runs right down those pegs, right out the side. Um, the microphone runs, it's got its own little track here with some more pegs that kind of hold it in place. So it's just going to run right out there and right out the hinge as well. So let's go ahead and pull this out. And pull the microphone out as well. And get rid of this. And we're left with a bunch of wires. So it's going to be a little bit of additional work, but I'm going to pull the microphone wire and the antenna wire through this ring. And I'll get to that in a second as to why. So the screen, we're going to, we're going to get rid of the screen, <clears throat> but like I said, I do want to keep it. So you know, let's do a couple things here while I'm waiting. I am going to turn on my soldering iron. So let's off camera here real quick, moving some cables around to give myself some space. Turn it on, let it start warming up. Make sure I keep it far enough out of the microphone range. I hit, got it too close to the microphone in the last video and I realized it induced a pretty good hum into the signal. While I'm waiting on that, I'll kind of show a little bit here, get around the camera to show it. We'll try to zoom in, get a little bit of a closer view as well. So basically, let's see if I can get my pliers to kind of show a little bit better. The thickness, so not the width, but the thickness of these, um, the contacts on this ribbon cable all the way up to this little red band is about the diameter of this, of this ring. So it's a tight, tight squeeze, but it is doable to basically add a bit more of a twist to this cable. And we got to make sure that we don't actually put a pinch in the cable. And then you can see here, I'm still on video, the ring just kind of comes right off. And looking back at this display, if we look at it from the front, when we put it back in, it's gonna, it's gonna, the ribbon kind of, the ribbon cable kind of comes down. Oh gosh, getting the video. Okay, the ribbon comes down, and then it's gonna twist towards you once, up, and back down. And this is how it comes out of. Uh, of the case. So not too bad. Um, but again, we're not going to use this screen, so that's okay. While we're waiting, let's get the other screen out. We'll just make sure we have no issues here. We'll go ahead and zoom back out. So it looks good. The new screen is a bit trickier because it does not have the bend um, pre-curled, I guess, on the ribbon. So that's going to be a bit tricky to make sure that we don't have any issues with that. But I'm getting the soldering iron out because we need to attach the speakers from this ribbon to this ribbon. And I don't think there's any reason I've actually never done a full screen swap on a 2DS, so or on a on a DS Lite. So I don't know if it's any easier to do this now or later. I'm just going to go ahead and do it now, so it's kind of basically the same state as it would be if I did it without doing the screen swap. So we will let's see. We'll go ahead and start with the left speakers here. Um, we can see actually this one's kind of interesting. The let's see. Let's hold it up to the camera here. The left speaker has the black wire, the negative on the top, and the right speaker has the positive on the top. So either this is mis, um, you know, misassembled, I guess, or the speakers are 
the ribbon cables are run that way. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll go ahead and just do it the same way they had it, just, just for good measure. So I'm going to take a bit of flex to help out with getting some solder to connect to these pads here. And I'm getting awfully short on my <laughs> getting awfully short on the amount of solder I have left, but that's okay. Make sure we have so there we go. I'm just gonna cheat and just simply ouch. Put a little bit of it on each of these pads. Just let the flex basically just wick it right onto the board. And from there, we will disassemble or desolder this left speaker. And apologies, I'm going to probably be in the camera here for a moment. Let's see if I can feed the hand under the camera. So we'll take black wire, attach it to the top. And the red wire, attach it here to the bottom. And now we're going to desolder the other speaker. Get the display out of the way. And this one had the red on the top. So we'll go ahead and I really should have really should have uh, got that sponge wet because it's an awful lot of solder. But you know what? That's okay. It'll be fine. I'm not worried. Shut the soldering iron off. Move some stuff out of the way. things out of the way so the cables don't hit it. Okay. So, a couple other things here. We need this double-sided sticky tape. And that's primarily so that the screen will properly stick into the new display, or into the new shell. It's maybe not completely necessary because it might actually just pressure fit in there, but I'd prefer to prefer to do it just, just for completeness sake. So, this plastic piece is actually just a cover that sits over the rest of this. Now, removing this is sometimes a challenge because it likes to pull the, the sticky tape out along with it. But we'll see if we can do it without ripping the sticky tape. <laughs> In this case, it's pulling out all the paint. That's good. Let's try this side here. Sorry, I'm gonna go off camera here for just a second. Just trying to make sure I can try to do this without ripping too much of the tape here. <laughs> okay, so that's not the greatest outcome. Looks like a lot of the a lot of the color of this piece actually 
was stuck to that. Interesting. Okay, so it pulled off part of the the color, but that's okay. I might end up fast forwarding through part of this to see how well this can get back on here, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove this protective cover off of here. Um, if we didn't need that double-sided the tape, I'd probably do that at the very end so I don't get fingerprints on this, but um, I'm just going to do it now. And then, not on camera, so here, I'm going to go ahead and try to pull this off, keeping, keeping it as much intact as I can. Of that screen and then try to reinstall this roughly as much in center as I can. This is always fun, especially doing this on a on a 2DS screen, which has a lot more surface to cover and make sure that we don't accidentally cover any of the screen itself. So in our case, we just want to do just the shell, just the frame. It's not too bad. I think we can live with this. Sure, it's just secure down enough. Okay, we can now begin reassembly. I'm not sure how far into the video we are with this so far, but I think we're making pretty good time. So let's take this guy out. It feels nice, it feels like nice plastic. Some nice shipping material in there. All sorts of good stuff. So most of this we don't need at the moment. Protective cover off of this. We'll actually get to this half here in a bit. We're more focused right now on the upper part. So we can definitely see the difference in quality. Um, obviously we're missing all sorts of paint. They painted part of that plastic that I've, or the plastic that's in here. So that tape in there just to do it quickly. Um, so it's not going to be perfect. The plastic feels a little cheaper, feels a little rougher. Um, but this more so is just kind of a project for me to take a crappy DS that I bought for cheap and, and fix it. And here we're going to have some of the screen surrounds and stuff. We'll get to this in a bit. But first, we're going to work on putting everything into, um, into this front faceplate. So kind of going in reverse order here, we need to, we'll take our microphone, and if you remember, this sits right in here, got my pliers, I have the ones here, I'm just going to just push him in, make sure he's in all the way, and then he runs up and along the top, and then down through here. And just push the cable, make sure it's in all the way. Okay. So one down. Next, we're gonna take our antenna, and we'll go ahead and funnel it through there. 
as well. And let's see. So this one looks like there's a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra plastic sitting in here. I don't think that'll be a huge deal. Not sure I really need to push that in there. It makes me a little bit nervous, but that's okay. It'll be all right. And then run his wire through there and through right back in here. So getting a little closer. I'm going to take this guy. Something to keep in mind, um, which we can't really see on here, there's no black pads in here. Usually the speakers have black pads. And that's because they actually did stay connected. Um, they're just these little plastic rings around here. I don't know if they help with the vibration or what they are. Um, if you lose those, or if they might still be in the old shell, just make sure to put them in here. But I'm going to move some cables around. Kind of get things just up and out of the way so that I can sit this guy just drop him right right on in clip him into place if necessary and we'll take this speaker and sit him there and if we recall, the speaker sits here, and these wires kind of just run right along this little track for the back of the display. Now these are these are a bit finicky. They kind of want to keep popping back out of and out of place, and I'm not sure how much how precise they need to be. Um, I know I've had it before where occasionally they don't, things don't latch properly. So I usually try to get them, you know, as good as they were before. So I'll take one of our pieces of tape from the old screen just to kind of help hold it in place. And of course, the adhesive, these is kind of coming off too. That's not going to be the greatest help, but you know if I can get a little bit of it in place, I probably probably should get some different tape. But we'll see if this works for us. Yeah, this is really not helping much at all in this case. Um. Okay, I'm gonna go get a little bit of extra tape here to to do this. So I will be right back. Okay, and we're back. So I went ahead and just got some clear packing tape uh, and called that good. The one thing, of course, that I forgot to do in the process was to get this ribbon cable uh, through this hinge. So I should have probably done that before I put the screen into place. So, since this doesn't have a pre-bend to it, this might be a bit trickier. I probably should have dropped that in there first. So you got most of that on the camera. Okay. So let's do this again with the screen here. Let's loosen up 
this ribbon cable for now. Slide the screen back in. Get all the ribbon, or all the speaker wires where they're supposed to be, which is not in front of the screen. Get those out. So we can drop the screen down. This guy back over here. Take this tape off one more time. If you hear stories of people that do this and break their screen or break the ribbon cable, this is why. This is definitely, definitely the hardest part of the job. It's kind of a, kind of a nail biter until this part's done. Would really like to watch a video from how these were originally manufactured in the factory to see how they did this because otherwise this just seems like this would be such a chore to, to do. Okay, so we got getting there. And lastly, we have, I'm going to take these two. cables here and kind of feed these back into the middle of this ribbon so now the hardest part in my opinion if we look at this ring apologies for the actually this one's different <laughs> it seems like you never know exactly what you're going to get this ring seems to be equal thickness all around i've had some where one side is thicker than the other so it doesn't necessarily fit into the hinge uh, in one way, but this appears to be like it can go in either way. So I usually funnel the two wires originally, and now I take this cable here, and again, doing this on a brand new ribbon, it's a little bit harder to get it fully tight. We have to get this ring over this ribbon cable. And actually, we might be doing what we were. Might be doing okay here. Grab our tweezers. Just give it a little. Little pull. And I think we got it. I think we are we are in. So, that's great news. That is probably the hardest part of the job. So, at this point, we have everything in place. All the speakers, the cables, those, the negative on this left speaker is a bit finicky. I think we're gonna be okay. So, we're gonna take this guy and Try to get him all lined up back here and slide him right on up. Now you can see we've got some some issues on, let's see, I 
Okay, we're snagging. The right side, we're good. We're in good shape on this right side. The left side, we're binding on, it appears we're binding on part of this guy. So we're having a little bit of an issue getting this guy here to stay lined up. And the speaker kind of keeps trying to hop out on us. But no matter, we can, a little bit of force, a little bit of push, and there we go. So I will take these four or three. Why am I missing a speaker screw? Well, we'll get to that in a second. We'll start start this getting this guy secured here. So this set does come with new screws. Uh, personally, I just like to reuse the old ones. Um, I don't know, maybe the new ones fit better with the new case, but it's supposed to be pretty much an exact replica. I just figured I'd just reuse the old screws. And I'm a little confused why I'm missing it's gotta be this one here. Okay. Confusion has been demystified. Alright, the last one here. And we'll put protective stickers and stuff on there when we're all done. So now, let's see, what do we got to do next? Now we're going to start working on the bottom half of the console. So it looks like they've <laughs> they pre-installed some screws into here, at least originally for the battery cover. So we're going to take the battery cover out and take this slot two piece out of there, which coming out the easiest. And this guy, definitely cheap. I mean, they didn't even bother painting the inside of there. But again, this is more for show than anything. And pop this guy out of here. And a random piece of tape out here as well. And this is going to kind of just sit here um, until the end. So now we have a couple things. We need to get the ribbon cable through here as well as get the two speaker cables. And again, without damaging um, the ribbon cable here. So. Let's see, I'm trying to think of the easiest way that to, to do this part of it. Go ahead initially and run these two guys through here. And then I'm going to flip the whole thing over, kind of the where we had it before. And feed this cable in here at that bit of an angle. Again, hold your breath. One of the hardest, hardest parts is getting this ribbon cable all the way through the whole process. And once it's through there, 
put that down. Actually, what I forgot to do, I did forget one step, which was to install the hinge. The hinge is only going to be able to fit in here one way. We'll slide him. Oh. Should have put it on before I got flustered when my camera died on me. And once he's in, just give him a bit of a push and lock right into place, just like that. So we can close this guy. Grab our hinge out of our bag of goodies. Slide him in. I'm trying to get the hinge alignment in place here so it'll all screw in. There we go. Kind of all clips into place. And we'll take our two hinge screws. Take one hinge screw. Start the process of getting it secured into place. And we'll probably just do both of them and then tighten them up together. Again, nothing's going to be perfectly aligned, so there will be a bit of finagling to get everything into place. Okay. So, thinking back to our original piece here, doing this on in memory, so I'm trying to remember. Let's see. This guy is going to sit here. Okay, yep, of course. So, our microphone cable, sorry, I keep getting this out of the video is the one who's ultimately going to run. Got my pliers. So he's going to run under there. And then he has his little track that he runs. See if we can actually get it to clip in again with a aftermarket case. If not, we'll just kind of have to do this by hand as we put the the board in. Okay, I'm gonna set that there for the moment. Now, one thing we need to do this out of the way here that we have not done yet is remove the pink surround off of the digitizer. Now this is always kind of a dangerous thing to do. I usually want to have a second digitizer with me in case I break it. Uh, I don't so 
hopefully we'll, this will work. Because um, the digitizer is basically a couple pieces of believe, some electrically conductive uh, material that when you touch, it connects it together and uses that to determine where you've touched. Once you start pulling this off, you risk separating the two pieces apart, which will ultimately cause it to not work. Um, but we're just gonna try it. If it doesn't work in the end, you know, whatever. But this is just simply, in this case, a small piece of adhesive that I'll try to very carefully without separating the pieces underneath. I'm just gonna pull this guy off. And actually that turned out okay, which is great news. So, we are getting awfully close here. So we're gonna do a couple things. Let's get out some more of our fancy buttons and shoulders and everything else and get them all prepped over here. Oh, and I see, I see a problem, which is not my favorite. I'm gonna undo something here. This does not actually have the plastic insert in there already, which is sitting right here. So I need to pull the hinge back off just to put that plastic piece in there, which really stinks. I really, really don't wanna do that just for that piece, but I suppose we will. So pull that out. See if we can do it without having to remove everything else. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And then this guy, he's just gonna sit. Actually, let's see, let's look at the other hinge button, which I have somewhere around here in all these pieces. Okay, so if we look at this, the old one and the new one, I have those backwards. So I need to actually take this guy, flip him around. Okay. So we'll sit him back into place again. Line everything back up. That wasn't terrible, I guess, to do that. Grab our screwdriver. And the battery on my camera is getting low. I'm really hoping I can get this done tonight. Otherwise I'll have to pause it and charge it. It's already midnight. Don't know if I want to finish at one o'clock, but we'll we'll keep powering through it and see if we can get it done. All right. Getting awfully close. So, at this point, oops, we're going to install our buttons. Throw that in there. And throw our start and select buttons in. And I can never remember the order these buttons need to go. Actually, but I think, I believe they are keyed. So we're gonna look for the A button, which is this guy here. And he goes on the outside. And our Y button is tucked in over here. He goes over here on the inside. And our 
X. Is there. And then our B is here. So everything's all keyed nicely for us. And install our button cover there. Our start and select button cover. And our D pad button cover. Okay. Now, the last hardest part of this guy is getting this ribbon cable to properly seat into this guy. And last time I did this, I actually ripped the ribbon cable trying to seat it. I don't know if I ripped it or if it was just already pretty far gone. Oh, actually it wasn't too bad this time. Clip that down. Flip it over. And we'll slide the antenna cable that way. And drop this guy in here. And hope everything lines up. biggest piece might be, which it is, is our microphone cable. And we are almost done. So I'm going to take these two screws and we're going to sit screw this board into the bottom of this shell just to kind of hold the board into place here for us. Now, again, one of the hardest pieces is going to be funneling the antenna back through here and sometimes we have good luck sometimes we don't let's hope we have good luck for the camera today and we're not going to have the good luck today We got that run underneath it there, out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall the wireless card. Reattach this back onto the connector. Actually get it lined up here. Sometimes these are finicky to get on, other times these go on like nothing. There it goes. And then the antenna cable, or the uh, microphone cable. which I feel like it might not be run quite right because it's not like a whole lot of room to fit it in there. That's okay. We got it though. Okay. So last but not least, we have our shoulder buttons. And these are going to be the, the tricky part to, to make sure that 
um, things sit right once we put the back case on. So this is going to sit here. See, I'm still in the video. It's going to sit here with those pegs and the spring. So I'm going to go ahead and take the spring and the pegs off of the old. The old shoulder buttons here. I should probably sh show it on this one here if I can on the video. Kind of hold it in place here. I have no idea how well this is going to show, but there's a spring that sticks out here. There's also a piece on the inside that presses on the, the inside of the button, and that is what gives the leverage. So we need to make sure that when looking at it from the, the front, that the two pieces of metal on both sides here, um, those are behind the, the center spiral part of the spring. Um, I'm sure that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, let's see here. If I can grab the spring here and show it. Uh, awfully tiny, but you can see the spiral part and the two metal wings on it. Um, those are going to be, the wings are going to be on the back side. So let's take the shoulder button and this is probably going to be somewhat off camera because this is super tricky to try to get the spring and the peg and everything to line up properly. All right. I'll set that in here. I'm not going to I'm not going to fully attach it yet because I usually like to put the case on it pretty quickly after I get that in place. So I'll take the spring and the peg off this other one. And we'll do the same thing. Sorry, I know this is definitely partially off camera. bit of pressure so I don't lose the peg. There we go. And now I'm gonna hold this down and then wind spring and I just bent the spring into place and attempt to do the same with this guy Now, take this back shell, and we've got a couple switches here. We've got our power switch, which is going to sit, um, yeah, so there's a, it's really blurry, there's a play button, the battery's getting really low too, let's see if we can finish this. That's just going to sit into here. Again, grab the pliers to help get everything into position. And our volume button. Do the same thing. The volume button to me is always a little bit trickier to try to get into place. Getting it behind 
couple of pieces and drop it in. And it's got to be in front of the tab underneath of there. And put the volume button in the middle. Actually, it's the volume button on the outside. Slide this on the outside. Flip it over. And everything should. This doesn't need to come out, but I'll go ahead and pull it out. Which fits pretty rough again with the. Everything should pretty much should <laughs> drop into place. Now, I don't know what we're snagging on here. Power buttons is down. Usually it doesn't take that much pressure to clip it into place. Let's see what happened here. All right, I see that we lost our battery screw compartment, which is always fun. I wonder if that's what our snag was here. So where the battery piece, the battery sits in here, there's a tiny little metal piece that's ultimately gonna be where the screw slides into place there. That might've come loose. Um, if we look back on the original piece, there's a tiny little piece of tape that's right down there that kind of helps hold it into place. Um, a couple of these, I've needed it. A couple of them, I haven't. In this case, it appears as though we need it. I'll take some pliers, take it out. And just kind of usually push it in place. It looks like I really don't know what happened to this one because all the sticky keeps keeps staying on the old case. Yeah, this isn't sticking. So. We'll use some more tape as well, some of the new tape. Take a little bit of tape off of here. It's gonna be way more tape than we need. Way more tape than we need, but want it to just hold that in place. Let's see if that works. And actually this power, this antenna wire needs to go up on top. I don't know if that was also snagging on us or not. So let's give this another shot. Volume to the right. 
volume to the right. Power down. Definitely bind it on something. What are we hitting? Oh, well, first of all, we lost our shoulder button. Let's take this guy. Set the shoulder button back into place here again. Take our pliers. There's a piece of the battery compartment that's going to be, I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's hitting it just enough. Again, some slightly poor manufacturing here. So we'll take our side cutters and snip it off. No big deal. And let's give it another go. Let's see if I can get this working before the battery dies. Definitely keeps sticking on that corner over there, but I think we're okay. Let's just let's just start tightening the screws, and then we'll see what see what it looks like. Again, remember the fit and finish. These aftermarket kits aren't always going to be the greatest. Make sure volume button's still working. And then this last guy here. Shoulder buttons are actually still working, which is good. It's always, again, that's always kind of the fear on these aftermarket kits. Okay, we're back. So the camera died on me. Uh, I didn't realize it. So I ended up putting in the rest of the screws on the back. Um, Looks like we actually lost, let's see, our little battery compartment piece here slid over, so I'm going to slide that back. Um, but anyway, put in the rest of the screws there, the uh, cartridge slot screw, um, the other screws around there as well. So let's go ahead and plug in the battery. And put in our the battery cover. And let's give it a shot. Before we put everything else together, we'll just go ahead and test this quick. Uh, we can definitely see pieces of, or indicators that this is a cheap aftermarket kit. 
Um, the buttons themselves don't line up perfectly over here. The X is way off center. The Y is vertically off centered. Um, it feels okay. I mean, for the most part, it feels pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, the buttons are off centered, but shoulder buttons feel good. They click, click nicely. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's turn it on. Let's see if replacing the screen works and if everything else works. And it does. Let's get us some volume here. Got volume. Let's grab the stylus. And looks like everything else is still lined up. Uh, top screen works. Top screen looks like it has a bit of a flicker to it. Um, definitely doesn't appear to be as nice as the original. Looks like the battery's just about dead, too. Um, if we can zoom in here and see, there's a lot of, it's not very clear, um, where it says enter your name. It's kind of, it's a bit blurry. Um, there's a lot of red, I guess, in there, but it's fine. Battery's just about dead, so we'll see if I can just speed through this part of it here real fast. Definitely not the greatest screen, but... At least it doesn't have all the dying pixel parts to it. But it's working, so let's go ahead and just leave that off for the moment. And let's find extra pieces here. So we have, we have, here's we have a screen protector um, or a stylus protector. I'm not sure where that one goes. We have, so this is going to be for the top. We'll do that in a second. And this is going to be our surround down here. Of course, I put that in. Now I can't get it out. Let's go ahead and put this part of it on. Little one sided 3M sticky sheet here. I've done these before where these don't line up very well. But, of course, it helps if I would actually line it up myself nicely and not, <laughs> not ruin. Oh, goodness. Let's start on the top here. Get everything lined up as good as possible, anyway. Here's the bottom one. Of course, you can might be able to see on there. There's some pretty good scratches on the on the digitizer, but that's okay. I just doesn't bother me too much again because this is just kind of be going to be more for show. And then lastly, we have this guy, which this one's kind of nice. A couple of these that I've had have had paint on both sides, so it's hard to tell which way goes to the front. Uh, clearly, with the white, it's going to go on the back. So I'll start with the back piece, get the static off, and do the same thing, just kind of align it to the top here. Let's see, I should be able to still pull that off. Maybe I'll just do that now. Let's see if I can get this top part of the plastic protector off here. just to make sure it doesn't stick or get unable to get to it on the edge. And then just 
drop this guy right into place. So you can maybe see a little bit of pink behind it. Um, that's okay, whatever. Secure it in place. And we are almost done. There are a few extra tidbits of stuff here to do. This also includes all the screws and everything in here. Let's take out, take out this guy and some of these bumpers and this guy. So some of these I've gotten before have actually had the fake uh, serial number on them. Looks like this one didn't come with any of those. Um, but it does come with, let's see, it comes with some of the additional pegs and the spring. So in case you happen to lose those, they do come with spares. Um, so let's go ahead and close this guy. And these have a really small little notch on one side. And the notch, let's see, back at some of these, which I haven't put together. Okay, so the rounded part will actually sit facing towards the top. So, sit that guy in there. And this guy, in the same way. And now we've got some of the top pieces. So, do those last. And usually these are fairly well cut out. Um, sometimes they need a little bit of help because they're not perfectly cut out. These guys just sit right in there. And obviously, you want to make sure you test everything before you put these on. Um, otherwise, you risk damaging these, taking them back off. And almost done. And I'm not doing the greatest job getting these centered. They are sticking up a little bit on the top. It might because I'm kind of trying to do this around the camera. Um, or these might just not be the greatest cut pieces, but it's okay. So those are in there. And we also have two of these little pieces here, which are going to be the bumpers that sit over here in the corners to keep it from, you know, from like smashing into the bottom piece when you go to close it. And these, these are always a bit of finicky. I can never fully get these to sit in here correctly. You're supposed to kind of just push into here. Sometimes they fit nicely, which this one actually fit pretty well. And then the same for the other one. This one is not going to come out nearly as nice. This one got cut really close in the factory. So it's 
Maybe a little extra wide, but we'll see if we can face it towards the camera here a little bit. Get my fingers out of the way. And a little tiny bump there. Oh well, that's okay. And then a couple extra little pieces here. So we've got this. The old one did not come with it. Um, a lot of these people have lost them. But what you can do is you can take this old GBA cartridge slot protector. Um, and there's just a simple screw that you take apart. And then you transfer, there's a tiny little circuit board in there that kind of keeps the, the contacts clean. Uh, this one did not come with one. But I will take this and I will just grab, grab the screw that should have been used. And we'll just put it together anyway. Which... Not entirely sure which of these screws. It should be. These are always seems like there's always just a slight difference. But I'm just gonna grab I'm just gonna grab any one of these. I'll grab this one here. Don't think it matters too much. Um, obviously, if you're using all the screws to put it together, you'll use the one that's left. Um, and then, sorry, my voice is getting a little bit, a little crackly. It's getting to the end of the day with the cold and I'm just ready to be done. Just put that in. So it's in place enough. And we'll slide that guy right into here. And we are done. Let's turn it back on. The battery is almost dead. Uh, so I'm not sure how much we'll get left of life in it. Oops. Okay. I think that we are good. Of course, the, the, the power on sounded a bit different because I think today is my birthday and I know it has a different sound since when we set it up, we just said birthday was on 1-1. One, one. Let's see if we can, let's calibrate the stylus here. Let's just make sure that, actually, you know what? We can do it. I think we can do it through, I've never really messed with PictoChat, but I think on there we can just draw on the screen. Just make sure that it's working. Sure enough, appears to be working just fine. Um, yep, it's a happy birthday. Yeah, so clearly the screen is, is not a good screen. Um, try to zoom in a little bit and kind of just show again a little bit more. Um, there's a bit of flicker to it, but as well as where it's white, there's definitely a lot of extra color and noise into it. Um, but, you know, that's okay. The, the important part of it, let's go ahead and slide this in. See, that stylus doesn't fit in there the greatest either. Turn it off. But we have a really nice, obviously, aftermarket shell, um, but a really nice looking Zelda um, DS Lite. And, and I like it. This looks really nice. I will probably take the old sticker, if I can clean that maybe somewhat, and um, put that onto here. If not, you know, whatever. A lot of these, even the official ones, don't have the sticker anymore. And I did not get a sticker. Nope, no fake barcode in here, but that's okay. So I might do that. We'll see. If not, you know, it's fine. But hopefully this video, um, albeit a little bit long, hopefully this helped to 
maybe give you the confidence to do a case swap on your own. Um, I've done a number of these already and you can clearly see that I still uh, made a few mistakes. But you know that's that's part of the fun. These things are super cheap. If you if you have one that you you know that you kind of grew up with and you don't want to mess up with, I would definitely recommend just buying one cheap on eBay, uh, trying to swap it out yourself with one of those first before moving on to something like this. Um, like I said, I think I bought one for you know let's just say it was ten bucks, but then it was five bucks for the screen and another fifteen bucks for a shell. So I was already at thirty bucks. So it's definitely not going to save you a ton of money doing it this way it's more kind of just a for fun hobby you know just to do it but um you know it looks it looks brand new at this point so if you just want something to throw onto a shelf definitely recommend going this route um but yeah if you have questions or need some clarification on something i might have skipped past quickly in the video please feel free uh to leave a comment down below and i will try to answer those as you know as i see them come through um, otherwise, you know, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, feel free to give it a thumbs down. But if you do, please tell me why so I can try to make sure that I can make the next video uh, even better. So thanks again for watching and uh, stay tuned. I actually have another case swap coming up for a DSi that I bought as well as a screen swap on that as well. Uh, I've never taken apart a part of DSi, so that's going to be more of a uh, fix or flop rather than a tutorial. So keep an eye out for that. And I have a 2DS coming in the mail in a few days, which is definitely going to be a fixer flop. Uh, let me see what's wrong with that guy. I have a spare 2DS screen, so I'm hoping it's just a bad screen. And we can do a screen swap on that guy too and show you how to do that. And 2DSs are super easy to replace. So definitely stay tuned. Lots of content in the works. And um, look forward to, to putting it out there. So thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.